What do you get when you cross 14 centuries of lying with a 21st century internet connection? An avalanche. Let me try that again. What do you get when you cross 14 centuries of lying with a 21st century internet connection? You get what you deserve, you lying shakes. You get what you deserve. One more time. What do you get when you cross 14 centuries of lying with a 21st century internet connection? You get this video and a lot more like it. I've been saying for years that we are going to see far, far more of our Muslim friends leave Islam in our lifetimes than all previous generations combined. I was at the Doctrine for the Block Conference this past weekend, and a woman who's been evangelizing Muslims for a long time came up to me and said that her favorite videos on my channel are the videos where I share a bunch of comments from Muslims who've left Islam. She said it's encouraging to know that all the work we're doing is bearing fruit. We love to hear that our Muslim friends are leaving Islam. The Dawagandists, however, have a very different reaction. So one of the more shocking things that I have experienced over the course of those years is are the number of young boys and girls aged between 13 to 18 who have openly declared their apostasy to me. 24% of Muslim youth are leaving Islam. Yo, your child is going to become an apostate! Shut up! As if the avalanche of apostasy weren't bad enough for the Dawa gangs, they're now facing a full-blown Dawa civil war. Have you seen the Dawa gangs attacking each other in videos and on social media? Could they have picked a worse time to declare war on each other? Imagine you're standing at the bottom of a snow-covered mountain with a bunch of your friends, and all of a sudden, the ground starts to shake. Is it an earthquake? You look around, and then you see it. An avalanche. Thousands of tons of snow are about to bury you. So what do you do? You and your friends start punching and kicking each other. Wouldn't that be the absolute dumbest thing you could possibly do in that situation? Well, that's what the Dawa gangs are doing. They've got an avalanche of apostasy burying their religion, and their solution is to attack each other. Think about this. Our generation was the generation that suddenly got open access to all of Islam's most important sources, allowing us to expose the lies that these lying sheikhs have been spreading for 14 centuries. Our generation got to show millions of Muslims the truth about their fake prophet because millions of Muslims moved to the West to get away from the Sharia hellholes that Islam creates. Our generation suddenly got to reach Muslims even in Muslim countries anywhere there's an internet connection. And when we start blasting away at the foundations of Islam, what do the Dawagandists do? They attack each other to see who's going to be king of the religion that's been buried in apostasy. If I didn't know better, which I don't, I might think that the Almighty has delivered the most obvious false prophet in history into our hands. But don't mind us, Dawah boys. You just keep fighting while we keep welcoming all the men, women, and children who are leaving your religion into the kingdom of ex-Muslims. Would you like to hear from some ex-Muslims? I know I would. As a very confused Muslim, when I was looking for answers to leave Islam, David Wood was there for me. I'm an ex-Muslim now, and I owe all to my dear friend, Dr. David Wood. Just wanted to thank you once again, sir. Stay blessed, always, love and regards. Love and regards to you, my ex-Muslim friend. I am a new ex-Muslim, and I am proud I found Jesus Christ. Thank you, David. Thank you for bringing joy to so many viewers right now. Thank Mr. David Wood, you changed my life. I am name deleted because the penalty for leaving Islam is death from Pakistan. With the help of your videos and DCCI and others who really exposed Islam, now I am Christian and a warrior of Jesus Christ. It's good to hear, brother, because we need warriors. I am from Nigeria. Christian from Yoba State, Northern Nigeria to be precise, and I wish to subscribe to this channel twice or thrice. Mr. David, I used your channel to convert two Muslims, and I'm going to convert one this week. May God bless you. Christianity is one of the gifts my dad gifted me. He converted to Christianity when I was not born. I love you, David. 
And we love you, our brother from Nigeria. I also thank people like David Wood, Abdullah Samir, Apostate Prophet, and many others for their contribution in opening my eyes to the truth of Islam and eventually helping me to get out of this cult. Thanks, everyone. And thank you, brother, for joining the global community of ex-Muslims. David, I was in a taxi here in England. My taxi driver, was it Ali Dawa? Told me he left Islam after finding your videos. Yes, he was Afghan. Oops, not Ali Dawa. But hearing your Afghan taxi driver tell you that he left Islam had to make that one of the coolest taxi rides ever. Took me 10 years, but officially left. Thank you, David. You and Nabil started the journey way back when. Keep rocking. There's no wrong time to rock, am I right? Hello, Dr. David Wood. I'm from India. I was born into a Sufi Barelvi sect of Islam whose motto is to promote peaceful and refurbished Islam. I was made to believe and love Prophet Muhammad madly and always praise him. But during the initial starting of COVID-19, I saw your videos. Till nine months, I cursed you and AP, but intentionally I cross-checked your references about Momo's pedophilia and others' critics of Islam. It was bitter to swallow truth. My Imam Kadim Hussein Rizvi, in public speech, said Islam spread by the sword and force. That's true. Till 13 years of preaching Islam to polytheists, Mecca, no one accepted Islam, just a few. Then he waged war on Mecca, making forcefully people converted. Islam spread by force and sword, but will end through the internet. Then I became agnostic for six months. Then, because of Christian Prince, Dr. David Wood, DCCI Ministries, by God's grace, I'm a secret Christian now. I'm living a false life. Can anyone give suggestions? Actually, a while back in one of my videos, I mentioned ex-Muslims who are still pretending to be Muslims. And since then, I've been hearing from a lot of ex-Muslims who are still living as Muslims. So I'll probably make a video sometime this month sharing my thoughts on that. One of your videos was the spark that made me think and search. I tried to be as honest as possible with myself, and this, as expected, led me to become a proud ex-Muslim, although I can't share that except for one friend. I live in Egypt. Still, leaving this horrible religion has given my soul peace. Thank you, man. God bless. God bless you. Thank you for pulling me out of Islam. It's what we do. Me, AP, DCCI, Christian Prince, we run a rescue shop. I'm also from Uzbekistan, and I love and thank you, David and AP, for opening my eyes. Proud ex-Muslim now and happy. We're happy for you. It's nearly a year since I left Islam, thanks to AP and your channel. Wow, can't believe I believed all the BS for 32 years of my life. I'm a happy ex-Muslim now, would never, ever go back to Islam. You'll never go back to Islam because you got vaccinated with facts. You got vaccinated. I was already halfway out the door. UAP and CP's information further pushed me completely out the door. Glad we could help you with a little shove. My friend and his family left Islam after I started sending him your videos and AP's videos. They're Sudanese and came as refugees. Well, you tell your Sudanese friends that we love them, that we're glad they made it out of the Sudan safely, and that we're especially glad that they made it out of Islam. Because of David, I left Islam. That's just how it is. Welcome to the rescue shop. My dad is an imam. I have learned one-sixth of the Quran, 10 hizb. The Quran is divided into 60 hizb, so memorizing 10 would be one-sixth of the Quran. And I also left Islam because of you, but not all you, honestly. Yasser Qadi, discussing the Kirat, is the moment I chose to leave Islam, but for sure your work helped me. The different versions of Quran have so many problems, I am 100% sure it's not from God or any gods or maybe a stupid one, so not mine. Wow, how many Muslims have left Islam because of Sheikh Yasser Qadi's infamous holes in the narrative interview with Muhammad Hijab? And really, it wasn't just because of 
what Sheikh Yasser Qadi admitted about the Quran, it was because Muslim scholars and imams and apologists spent years telling Muslims and non-Muslims that there was only one Quran, and that every Quran in the world is exactly the same, and that there have never been any differences in any Quran manuscripts. And then all of a sudden, Muhammad Hijab accidentally gets Sheikh Yasser Qadi to admit that it's all been a lie, and Muslims start leaving Islam. So, it wasn't just that Muslims found out that there are different versions of the Quran centuries ago. Muslims knew that. It was Muslims learning that their scholars and imams and apologists are a bunch of liars. That's what made them doubt Islam. Anyway, thanks for the assist, Sheikh Yasser Qadi and Muhammad Hijab. You're helping countless Muslims leave your religion. And there are more on the way. Look at this. I'm getting close to leave Islam, this is embarrassing to watch. This was in response to some clips of the Dawa gangs saying some really stupid stuff. It's getting really embarrassing for Muslims, and this is why the ex-Muslim community is growing exponentially. So these are some of the comments I got over the past month. Keep in mind, I don't see the vast majority of comments I get. There are way too many to read. But in the comments I see, there are a lot of ex-Muslims. I also get emails from ex-Muslims. I usually don't post those because they're sent specifically to me. I post comments from the comments section because those are from people who are saying something in public on YouTube, so I don't mind sharing them. And I see lots of comments from ex-Muslims who left Islam after watching other people's videos or for various other reasons. I sometimes post these collections of comments from ex-Muslims who mention my videos because for a long time, I got a lot of complaints from Christians saying, David, this isn't the way to reach Muslims. You should never criticize Muhammad or the Quran. It only drives Muslims away. There were Christian ministries that trained Christians to evangelize Muslims, and they would train Christians not to criticize Muhammad or the Quran. So Christians would hear that, and they would see me blasting away at Muhammad, and they would tell me that I'm ruining everything. Muslims are going to be so upset at Christians because of my videos that they'll never listen to Christians ever again. They'll never trust anything Christians say because of my videos. No one will ever be able to witness to Muslims ever again, all because of me. I heard that all day, every day, for a long time. I was trying to deal with Muhammad and the Quran, and I had keyboard jihadis from around the world telling me that they're going to kill me and kill my kids and rape my wife. And the entire time I'm trying to deal with Islam in front of me, I've got Christians running up behind me. David, what's wrong with you? Why are you doing this? You're the worst thing ever. But as I was reading these complaints from Christians, I was also reading comments from people saying, Hey, thanks for the videos exposing the lies about Muhammad. I hated you at first, but I just left Islam. And I eventually started putting together batches of these comments from ex-Muslims as a response to the Christians who were telling me that I should stop attacking Muhammad and the Quran, or that I shouldn't be so mean, or that I shouldn't be mocking Islam. And fortunately, the number of complaints I get from Christians has plummeted over the past five years or so, because people are realizing that Muslims who leave Islam usually only leave Islam after their confidence in Muhammad and the Quran has been shattered. Anyway, my point here is that when I post a bunch of comments from people who left Islam after watching my videos, this isn't to boast. It's mainly to show people that relentlessly smashing the foundations of Islam works. And it's encouraging for people who are trying to reach Muslims to know that even if it takes a long time, even if it takes years, you can show Muslims that Muhammad was a false prophet. So, if I ever sound like I'm bragging, I'm not. I know I sound like that sometimes because I do like to talk trash. But I can't seriously brag because I know myself too well. I remember what I was without Christ. I remember being in a cell with the doctor telling me that he's going to tube feed me because I was starving myself. I remember passing out when I would try to stand up. I remember putting a cup on the floor beside my bunk and hanging my head over the side of the bunk so that I could drool into the cup because I couldn't stop drooling. 
I remember my lawyer telling me that the psychiatrist wanted to send me to another mental hospital. I remember lying in bed and fantasizing about torturing people all day. I know what I was. In my testimony video, I mentioned praying to accept Christ. And I mentioned that when I was praying, I said to God, if you can do anything with me, you're welcome to it. Here's the thing. I didn't think that he was actually going to do anything with me. I thought that my life was beyond repair. I was 20 years old, less than a year into my sentence for trying to beat my dad to death with a hammer. Where do you go from there? Who would hire me? Who would marry me? Who would even want to be friends with me? So I prayed for salvation, but that part where I said, if you can do anything with me, you're welcome to it, was basically me saying, I don't think my life is salvageable, but you're the Almighty, so if anyone can figure something out here, it's you. My only qualifications are, I'm not scared of anything, I can take limitless abuse, and because of my background, I'm not going to count anyone out. So, Lord, you got a spot for someone like that? Again, was not expecting anything to happen. So anything that I accomplish in life, I regard as an answer to prayer, and it's kind of hard to boast about God answering a prayer. One more comment before we go. I became an ex-Muslim when I started watching videos of AP and David Wood, but now I don't know what to do. I feel a void inside me. I try to fill it by praying to different gods in different conditions, but I don't know what will work out for me. If you guys know anything about how to become a better person, please tell me in the comments. I feel so lonely and I started getting agitated. I don't know what's the purpose of life anymore. Please help. There are a few issues here, my friend. You feel a void and you tried filling it by praying to different gods. You're lonely. You're wondering how to become a better person and you're wondering about the purpose of life. Some of these issues can have different solutions. If you're lonely, that might be a spiritual problem, or you might need some good friends, or maybe a wife. If you want to become a better person, you might need a supernatural change, or you might need some foundation for morality, or you might need to get some good habits. So you want to figure out the source of your problems. As for the other issues, I'll get you started. Go ahead and watch the Reasonable Faith animated videos, they're pretty short, but there's a lot of important content there. Then, if you haven't watched my video, Why I Am a Christian, be sure to check that out in case anything you're facing overlaps with anything I talked about. And after that, watch my short animated video, What is the Gospel? All the links are in the description box. Let me know what you think.